Two years ago, I built this sauna in our house from scratch. I made a YouTube video showing you guys how I did it, and since then, it's got about 450,000 views and hundreds and hundreds of comments. Today, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of an update. We're gonna talk about some of those comments, a lot of them being very strong opinions. Anything that we would do differently, I'll give you guys the price breakdown again, any updates, problems that we've had, and some things that I did not cover in the first video. When I first started looking at building a sauna, I was assuming that we were gonna do a barrel sauna and we'd put it in our backyard. I've seen those, I think that they're really cool, and I've actually been in using saunas for 10 years plus before I built the one in our house. But as I started doing my research, I realized that an outdoor sauna or a barrel sauna is basically just a wood box with a heater. And when I realized that, we don't have the best setup in our yard. Uh, we do have a nice yard, but we don't have the most privacy from like side to side with our neighbors. And that means we'd have to come in and out through the yard, which just was a little bit awkward. If all it is is a wood box with a heater in it, it seemed like it would be a lot easier for me to just build that in our basement or build it in our house in a room then actually get all the pieces and kind of put something together like a you know, piece of Ikea furniture basically. And I think that it was a lot easier and it was also probably about half the price. Uh, if you look at barrel saunas, they range from like six to $9,000. It's kind of like a general range for a good sauna. And in total, our sauna was about $3,100 for all the wood, all the material that it took to build it. This was two years ago and prices have gone up a lot, so I doubt you could do it for that cheap, but that does include the heater, the wood to build it, the cedar, and the glass door that we put on it. I'll give you guys some more detail on that in a second. The reason we didn't do a barrel sauna, that was a question that we got, that's kind of why. Whole lot cheaper and a lot more privacy. Breaking down the exact cost for you guys again. The heater itself, I'll put in the link below, but the heater was $835 and it will get up to about 180 degrees in the sauna, which is more than enough. I'll touch base on a couple more points on that here shortly, but just talking about the cost itself, the rough framing or the rough construction, meaning like two by fours, insulation, foil insulation, all of the things kind of behind the walls was $582. The cedar, meaning everything that covers the walls and the wood that the benches are made of, was $1,618. So that was kind of the bulk of the cost. Cedar's expensive, and I'm sure it's gone up, honestly, quite a bit in the past two years. The door, I'll show you guys the door. We had a ton of questions about that. It is a glass door, it is tempered. We got it from Menards, and it was $150. Again, I'm sure those prices have gone up, but the total cost was $3,135 in total start to finish, and it took me a weekend to put this thing together. I think it was about two and a half days, and it was somewhat casual to do that. The hardest part, or the most technical portion of this, is running the 240 for the heater. We put ours in a basement, which did make it a little bit easier. We've got a drop ceiling, so kind of fishing the wire over to the breaker and then back over to where the heater is actually gonna be mounted was pretty easy. Depending on what your setup is or where you're trying to get the room, that could be the most technical part. Probably a good idea to have an electric but it is really simple. Even though it's more voltage, it is literally two wires plus a ground. So wiring the heater is very simple. Wiring it into a breaker is no different than wiring anything else into a breaker, especially when it's turned off, it's pretty straightforward. Trying to answer just some of the general questions for you guys, the size of the room, it is a six by six. So six feet by six feet, it is a square. Benches make it look like maybe a little bit more of a rectangle, but it is a square room and this heater has no problem heating it up. It normally takes maybe 30 minutes to get up to about 170 degrees and maybe a little bit longer to get up to that like 180. A lot of people have also been curious about our electric bill. Honestly, we use this thing multiple times a week. In the winter, it's probably five times a week. In the summer, a little bit less than that, maybe three to five times a week. And I honestly don't really notice a difference in our electric bill. We're not very conservative with it. So I might turn it on an hour before I'm getting in. Unintentionally, I either get to like get stuck in work, doing something, it takes me longer than I anticipated to get in. It does not make some like noticeable difference in our electric bill. In the winter, it's a little bit easier to use. Like first thing in the morning, it's really nice to just get a sweat going. In the summer, something that's a little bit more common for me that I've been doing recently is I'll do like a 60 minute bike ride on the C2 in the garage. I'll go 30,000 meters in that uh, 60 minute window and then I'll go right down to the sauna and I'll spend about another 20 to 25 minutes in there. It just feels like extra conditioning. Like uh, my heart rate will be in zone two. I'll continue sweating. It's just a nice way to like decompress and wind down after like a long bike ride. We'll also keep a like a ball, do some mobility stuff in there. You can use a little cross ball or a big softball that we've got in there to kind of like roll things out as you're like hot and soft is pretty satisfying. But let's go down to the basement. I'll show you guys some of the things that we get asked a lot. I'll show you what the sauna looks like. I'll show you our basement and we'll get into a few more questions and some of the comments that people are very opinionated about. All right guys, so this is the glass door that we use. Again, it is from Menards. It's kind of a safety thing as well as it's just nice. So from the outside, you can look in, check on somebody if they're in there. Same thing from the inside out. It is just nice kind of not feeling like you're in a completely closed box and being able to see 
outside. Something that I did learn actually from the comments was to not have this just like a enclosed box that gets really hot. That doesn't create a whole lot of like breathable or like good, like well flowing air. So the door does have about a one inch gap on the bottom. And I did end up installing a vent in one of the walls so that there is a draft that comes under the door and then out the vent. And that does just keep the air fresh and it actually makes it hotter almost I think the, the concept is kind of like blowing on a fire where more air does make it hotter, makes it breathe better, and it just makes it a little bit more tolerable to be inside. A mistake that I did make that I had to change is I originally put can lights in here. They just don't hold up to the heat. So it was not very long before those literally just melted. So I did have to go with some like glass lights that were, I don't, I'm not sure if they were meant for a sauna, but they were definitely more appropriate and haven't had any issues with those scents. Almost immediately the normal can lights did just basically melt. Cause I'm sure if it's 180 degrees at the thermometer height, it's probably, 200 plus at the actual ceiling. So those did not last very long. If you guys do uh, a sauna like this, make sure you've got lights that are gonna hold up to the heat. A question I originally didn't cover in our DIY video was what I used for the floor. And a lot of you guys seem to be really interested in that. I didn't really do anything special. We had redone our floor at one point in the basement and I just had continued that floor into the room where the sauna is. It doesn't actually get hot at the bottom of the floor. It's probably almost room temperature when you're like below knee height. All the heat does rise, so you don't really need anything special. It is a waterproof laminate, so anything sweaty or whatever drips onto the floor just gets mopped up, but it's held up perfectly fine, and we didn't need anything like special down there. I do have a rubber mat that I've got under the heater, but that's more just to kind of catch extra water. Like if you throw a ladle full of water on the heater, it is gonna splash off, so just to kind of keep like puddles or anything like that off. I did put that down, but we haven't had any issues with either the, the mat or the laminate floor itself. The most common opinion that we got, and people were very strong about this, was water and how things are going to mold, water is gonna get behind the shiplap, the shiplap wasn't done right. It's very odd to me and also like, it was strange how opinionated people were. But one, this is a sauna, it's not a steam room. So it's not a lot of moisture. There has been zero issues with the water. Cedar is an extremely dry wood and with the small amount of water that comes in from just uh, like tossing some on the heater, it is immediately basically just kind of soaked up into the wood. There has never been even a single drip of water that is like accumulated to the amount that it is going to run down the walls or even the glass. When you immediately throw the water on, you'll feel the steam. You'll never see it. It'll kind of fog the glass up for just a second and then it just feels hotter. So it turns it into a moist heat, which is gonna be much more noticeable than a dry heat, but it's never steamy or foggy in the room and water is not getting behind the walls. It's not running down the cedar. That's probably the biggest opinion that we've got of people who thought this was done wrong or improperly, but it has literally caused zero issues and it seems very obvious being in it that it won't cause any issues. So if you had a steam room, obviously you'd need a different setup, but that would be something made like completely of tile and completely water resistant or like a water barrier. There's no real need for like a water barrier of any kind. It's a hot room, like it's sweat. There's, we're not, we're not like hosing this thing down. So that has held up perfectly. There's zero signs of mold anywhere and there's never been any sort of accumulation of water anywhere. Again, the thing that was helpful that I did learn from the comments was the vent and that did make it just more enjoyable uh, to have just a little bit of airflow. It's not that you necessarily feel it when you have it, but you did feel it when you didn't have it. So it just felt a little bit stuffier, a little bit harder to breathe. There was still a gap under the door, but it wasn't anywhere for that water or for that air to kind of like flow through. So that was something that I did learn and I would encourage you guys to do if you have one or if you're going to build one, have some sort of venting system, use some lights that can hold up to the heat. But this was honestly a pretty easy project. It's substantially cheaper than buying like a nice barrel sauna you have at your house. So you can either walk downstairs or whatever room you possibly want to put it in. It's just easy and convenient. If we we're going to build another house, I think, or if we we're going to build a house and I was going to put a sauna in it, I think I'd probably do it in the bathroom uh, upstairs. I think that'd be a really cool idea just to go straight from the sauna into the shower. We've had a couple people who used that video to do something similar and they sent us some pictures and I thought it looked really cool. So I think that would kind of be the next step up in whatever our next house is. If you guys have any questions or anything that I missed, again, let me know. I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you guys have. You can either put them in the comments, shoot us a DM. Did remodel our basement at another point too, which I think you guys were interested in. I'll give you guys a little bit of a look around at that. But if you want us to do a video on the before and after and kind of what we did to kind of create Christy like a little yoga room down here. We'd be happy to do that for you guys too. Hope this was helpful. Let us know if you got any questions and comments or what you want to see in future or upcoming videos.